all thankful for Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 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 Come on. Sitting down right there, I was like, man, I feel mighty insufficient trying to preach after what the Holy Ghost has already been preaching. Come on, man. Come on, man. Good stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Amen. I really enjoyed the testimonies. Uh, testimonies yeah. were really good. Amen. Yeah. Y'all didn't get any preaching out of those. Uh, right. You are listening. <laughs> hey, listen, there was enough preaching there. We could have came and prayed and did That's business right. with God and went home. Right. So, yeah. Uh, I do appreciate y'all letting me come back and uh, letting me get up and preach. It's an honor every time. And uh, I do appreciate Brother Steve. And um, Brother Steve's been a blessing to me. Amen. And uh, he's been a blessing to, ever since we came over here, he's been a blessing to me and my wife. And uh, he's been an encouragement to us. And I thank the Lord for that. Um, y'all got a good pastor. He's a good man. Give him a raise. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say, uh, Brother Mike Stone, uh, I've never heard him before. Honestly, I've never heard I've never heard of him. And I, until this week. And then everyone was talking about it. They're like, I'm like, my goodness, where have I been under a rock? Like, I got people in our church. They're like, man, I can't wait to hear Brother Mike Stone. I'm like, Brother Mike, who's that? But out of everything I've heard about him, yeah. I feel this small getting up here as well. <laughs> so y'all pray for me, and yeah. uh, we'll see what God will do tonight. Go to Luke chapter 8. Uh, Luke chapter 8. This board right here scares yeah. me to death. Yeah. Every time I back up and stand on this thing, it scares me. I feel like I'm like, oh, if I fall through. Jesus will catch you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 8. Um, we're going to read a good portion uh, of this passage. Um, in Luke chapter 8, I do want to say um, that this message, we're probably going to talk about some things uh, that really kind of makes the average American Christian nervous, right. and, uh, which is far too American and not enough Christian. Right. Uh, that's the problem with American Christianity is right. it ain't Christian. It, right. It's more American than it is that's anything. Right. Yes. Um, but I, I do want to say that the subject tonight uh, in our church, y'all heard it Sunday morning, so just act like you've never heard it before. <laughs> act like it's brand new. Uh, but we're going to be talking on uh, what I believe is probably one of the most fascinating stories in the Bible. Um, I think it's an amazing story, um, and I believe it's an amazing thing that really happened. And, yeah. uh, and I believe it shows the power of the Lord Jesus That's Christ right. in a great way. Um, so if you're in Luke chapter 8, let's look in verse 26. Yeah, amen. amen. Luke chapter 8, verse 26, the Bible says, And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes... It had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Yes. Yes. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Yeah. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Mm -hmm. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told them by what means he that was possessed of the devils were healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them. For they were taken with great fear. And listen, I would be too. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been too. Yeah. They were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done unto thee. Amen. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus yes. had done unto him. That's a good verse for the deity of Christ. Yes, right? sir. Right. Let's pray. Uh, Y'all pray with me and pray for me, and let's see what God will do. Father, we thank you for being good to us. Uh, thank you for your grace, your mercy. Lord, thank you so much again for allowing us in church tonight. I pray you bless the preaching. 
Lord, speak to our hearts. Lord, do eternal things that only you can do. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. 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 So, here in Luke chapter 8, this is a story that is mentioned in three others of the Gospels. Yeah. Um, so there's four Gospels in your Bible, and all four of them are different accounts from different apostles right. of their view of the life and ministry of Jesus. Yeah. Um, in the three Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, this story is mentioned all three times. Yeah. And in order to get the full picture of this story, uh, we are going to turn over to Mark chapter 5. Not right now, but later on in the message. So just be prepared. Uh, we will turn a few places tonight. Uh, but giving you a little context of what has just taken place, up in verse 22 to verse 25, Jesus has just told His disciples to get into the ship and to go over to the other side of the lake. And so they get in the ship and they're about halfway through and a storm comes. Right. And the storm's raging and Jesus, many of y'all know the story, steps out and He calms the storm. Yes. Yeah. And He says, peace be still and the waves cease. How many of yeah. you glad Jesus can still cease Amen. your storm? Amen. 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 Right. And the waves cease and Jesus and the disciples land safely onto the other side. Right. And they get off the boat and they come to the shore and that's where this story <coughs> takes place. Right. So I want to kind of break this story down into some points and go through it um, and examine some things that go on. Uh, right. First, I want us to look at the person that comes to Jesus. Right. The person that comes to Jesus. Look in verse 27. The Bible says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time. And wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. Mm -hmm. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God, most high? Yeah. I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirits to come out of the man, for oftentimes it had caught him, and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he broke the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Uh, yeah. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. Right. So we see this man that comes to Jesus, and he's got a situation. Yeah. Uh, and I want us to look at this problem that this man has. If you look yeah. in the verse, the Bible says he was possessed with devils. Right. And yeah. just to lay a foundation, can I give you a little context? I still believe you can be possessed with a devil. That's yes, right. sir. That's now right. let me give a little explanation. I don't believe a saved person can be right. possessed That's with right. devils. Yes, sir. Amen. But I do right. believe people can still be possessed with That's devils. Right. Yes. I do believe saved people can still be <laughs> oppressed and depressed right. by yes, the sir. devil. That's right. Um, I believe, listen, yes. a lot of your warfare is not with flesh and blood, but right. it is with spiritual wickedness right. and high Places. Right. Listen, your enemy, believe it or not, is not your brother or sister in the pew next to you. Right. That's right. Um, any argument in a church, you best believe it did not start with flesh and blood. That's yes. right. Come on. I believe Christians have stuck their head in the sand to this subject. That's right. That's I believe right. the spirit world is something we've closed our eyes to yeah. because right. it makes you nervous. Yes. But the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 11 through 12, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that yeah. you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Yeah. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Can I tell you, Joe Biden is not who we're fighting against. Right. Yeah. You're fighting against somebody a whole lot stronger yes, than right. a Democrat. Yeah. Yeah. And so right. there yeah. might be a spiritual world in the background taking place. Right. Right. Come on, man. But it says we not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against right. spiritual wickedness in high places. Right. Listen, many of the impulses and thoughts and things that you fight as a Christian, they did not come from nowhere. Right. And you need to know that because you need to know what you're fighting against. Right. Amen. We're fight hey, we've got a wicked flesh, but you're fighting against a whole lot more than a wicked flesh. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's right. The Bible, that's why the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27, the Bible says, For the word, or it says, neither give place to the devil. Right. Yeah. He's saying neither give place to the devil in your life. Can I tell you, he's writing that to Christians. Yeah. Yes, sir. He's not writing that to a lost world that That's knows right. not God and that cares nothing about God. He is That's writing right. that to God's people. That's yeah. That you don't give place to the devil. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Listen, in other words, when you give place to the devil, you give him place to speak right. into your life. That's right. Come and on. you can allow that as That's a right. Christian. Good yeah. Bought with the blood of Jesus, you can allow the devil to have place in your life. Yes, right. Now listen, yes, we're sir. laying a foundation. We're actually going somewhere. Amen. But I believe there's many places Christians can give the devil place into their lives. Yeah. You can give the devil place into your life 
by music. Come on up. Mm. Listen, I really believe music is probably one of the most powerful spiritual things yep. in yes. this world Come on. that can motivate and move a human being to do things they would have never done. Yeah. It's yes. emotional. Yeah. That's why you can listen to songs and start crying. Yeah. And not, I'm not talking about just Christian songs. I'm talking about you can listen to a country song and be in depression and be, start right. crying. Yeah. It's Come spiritual. On. It's Come spiritual. On. And listen, music will move you. Yeah. Satan will move through music. Yeah. If you read right. in your Bible, there's times they set up instruments to sing to God and right. the Spirit of God would fill the building right. when they started singing. Yes, sir. Listen, music is a spiritual thing. That's right. And bad music is a spiritual thing. That's right. right. Yeah, Don't on, think on, Satan on. will not get That's into your preaching. life through yep. listening to bad That's music. Good preaching, rap right. music, rock and roll music. Listen, I listen to some I, I used to listen to rap music when I was before I was saved. <laughs> And after I got saved, I, I hear some of that stuff now from some people like playing it on the radio and stuff. It is the most nastiest, vilest stuff for right. Steve. And as a child of God, I know not how you can enjoy it and like it. Come on. Amen. Yeah. It is a satanic tool of the devil. That's and right. can I say, even your country. <laughs> I'm going to get off this, I promise. I know y'all ain't like this. But you know, country music, believe it or not, all it does is say, well, I'm just going to leave my wife, go get a beer bottle and Come sit on. on a beach somewhere and just Come let on. loose. <laughs> right. It moves you emotionally. Come on. It moves you. <clears throat> Music is spiritual. It's a powerful tool of the devil. That's right. There's a spiritual world we're fighting against. Listen, things that you hear, the devil can get placed into your life. But things right. that you see, the devil can get placed into your life. Oh, right. right. That's right. Listen, I believe uh, pornography is probably one of the worst epidemics in Come America. On. Yes, sir. Right. In America. Not just among adults, but among yeah. teenagers, among Come young on. people. Yes. And uh, listen, when it comes to music and things that we hear, and, and listen, drugs and alcohol are all things that gives the devil place right. into your life. Come on. Um, I promise, listen, drugs and alcohol open up a door for Satan to come That's into right. your life and destroy your life. That's, That's right. right. That's right. That's right. And uh, there's, there's, listen, it's not a coincidence they call alcohol spirits. Yes, come on. <laughs> come on. The devil even knows right. what he's doing. The problem is, is God's people have closed their eyes to it. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a spirit world. Yes, sir. And what I'm saying is, is if you play games with the spirit world, yes. on. you'll wind up just like this man. Amen. That's right, man. And if we're about to read, and we're going to examine some more things. We're getting past this, but we can't go further until we That's get right. it. We've got come to on. realize there's a spiritual world with devils and what we call in this day and age demons. And believe come it or not, on. I believe that's a Latin word for devils is yeah. where we get that term demon. That's right. But I, I, I read a report. Um, and this is, listen, I don't, I don't agree with the Catholic Church. I believe they're just as demonic as the devil that's in the person. Come on. <laughs> but I read a report uh, that the Catholic Church put out in 2005. They said that the amount of people who came to the Catholic Church wanting to get exercised from a devil mm -hmm. doubled in 2005 to 2020. Wow. Right. Doubled. Yeah. The amount of people coming saying right. they're possessed with the devil. What I'm saying is it's real, and you stop yeah. closing your eyes to it. Come on. You're fighting against the spiritual world. Yeah. I want you to notice in the text some things that this demonic spirit led him to do. We're about to get on shouting ground in a little bit. Oh, yes, not, huh? <laughs> some things Where's this demonic on? spirit led him to do. Look in verse 27. The Bible says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and he wear no clothes, neither abode in any house but in the tombs. Right. Yeah, that's right. Now listen, when a baby's naked in public, I get it. But when a grown man's walking around naked in public, there's something bad right. wrong. Right. Yeah. There's something spiritually wrong. Right. Yeah. Demonically on. wrong. And can yeah. I tell you, people are doing that all around this world. Come on. Right. Yes. Yeah. All around this world. Come on. There's something bad wrong with it. This man yeah. didn't just walk around naked, but he was walking around in tombs. In other words, around dead things, That's skulls. Right. There's a reason rock and roll music has skulls all over it. Right. <laughs> Come on. It's demonic. There's a That's spiritual right. world. Amen. I'm getting on y'all's music. All right, we're moving. We're moving, I promise. Hold your hand here. Go to Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5 real quick. Get a little bit more context of what has taken place um, in this man's life. And this is real life. Believe it or not, we all see right. things that this man has in his life all the time in America. Come on. So I want to show you two more things concerning uh, this demonic influence in this man's life and what it led him to do. If you're in Mark chapter 5, look with me in verse 4. Mark chapter 5, verse 4. The Bible says, Because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the yes. chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Verse 5, And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. Yes. Or cutting himself with stones. Yeah. Go back to Luke chapter 8. I want you, I took you there just to notice that this man 
that demonic influence led him to cut himself and hurt himself. Yeah. Right? Mm. Yes. Th listen, the, the rate of people who want to hurt themselves in America today is scary. That's yes. right. Young people that cut themselves and hurt themselves, it's scary. Right. Yeah. Listen, you, get, you don't need to close your eyes to it. They're not going through a phase. They're right. fighting against a demonic world, on, and you man. need to know how to help yeah. them. That's it right. is a spiritual fight. That's right. Yes. It's a spiritual Amen. battle. Amen. It ain't right. nothing to play with. That's, That's right. It's right. real. Amen. If you're in Luke chapter 8 now, let's go back. We notice this man's problem. This man's problem is he was fighting against evil spirits. Right. And he was possessed with them. And I want you to notice not just this man's problem, but look at this man's past. <clears throat> look in verse 27. The Bible says, And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time. Yeah, come on. Notice that he had devils long time. That's right. But he didn't have devils the whole time. That's right. Come on. Notice in the verse it says, Neither abode he in any house. But if you look in verse 39, the Bible says, Return to thine own house. Come on. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is this man ain't always been this way. Right. right. This come man on. used to have a home. Yeah. And if you read Mark chapter 5, the Bible says, Go home to thy friends. Right. He come used on. to have friends. Yeah. He used to have That's a right. family. Come and on. I tell you, he used Come to have on, a man. life on, that he enjoyed. Yeah. Yeah. And what had happened is somewhere in his life, he let That's the devil right. have a place. Yeah. And it yeah. took him farther than he ever thought he would go. Right. And it yeah. destroyed his life. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's good for He's you. had these for a long time, but he has not had them the whole time. Right. Yeah. Man, that's good. Yeah. In other words, right. he used to be a young teenager just like you was. Right. Yeah, yeah, you come on. Can I tell you something help you with something? Ain't no teenager ever grow up saying one day I'm going to be a drug addict. Listen. Come on. Ain't nobody grew up saying one day I'm going to be an alcoholic. Right, come on. Ain't nobody grew up saying one day I'm going to be a prostitute. Come on. Nobody grew up wanting to be those things. That's right. right. That's right. Well, I'm trying to warn some of you tonight. Nobody grew up wanting to be out there. Right, yes, The on. problem is, is somewhere along the way, they gave the devil place good. into their come life. On. And listen, just yeah. like the old statement is, sin will always take you farther than you want right. to go, and it'll keep you longer than you want to stay. Right. Yes. Right. This come man on. never wanted to be out there. Right. Come on. But yeah. the devil destroyed his life. That's good. Because right he there. gave the devil place. Yeah. yeah. He That's had a good. past. He had a past. And listen, um, he didn't start, it didn't happen in his life rapidly all at once. Right. It happened a little bit at a time. Yeah. In other words, Satan and sin <laughs> got placed into his life a little bit at a time. Right. Mm -hmm. And just like a, a statement I read in a book one time, he said, the chains of sin are too weak to be felt until they're too strong to be broken. That's mm -hmm. right. Wow. The chains of sin are too weak to be felt until they're yeah. too strong to be broken. Yeah, See, good. oftentimes we're dabbling in things in our life and we think, I'll just drop this thing when I want to. Right. But when you try to drop it, you'll realize it is too strong at that point. The Bible says in Ma uh, Proverbs chapter 5, verse 22, the Bible says sin has cords. Yeah. It has cords. That's it'll right. wrap around your life. And Come listen, it'll be, it'll be attached to your life. Come and can on. I tell you, can I help you when you know you're addicted to something? Is when you can't imagine life without it. That's right. It's when man. you get to a place and you can't imagine what it would be like without that in your life. Come on, and I remember man. when I got saved, listen, and I'm going to give you my testimony in a little bit, but I remember when I got saved, there were some things in my life that right. it took me a while, Brother Steve, knowing when I needed to quit them, I couldn't imagine what life was like without them. Right. And Come can on. I tell you, there's people, there's Christians, that right. they can't imagine what a good time would be right. without the sin that's in their life. Can Come I tell on. you what that is? That's addiction. That's right. It's addiction. Yes. That's right. Amen. So we see this man had a problem. Hmm. Yeah. We see that he had a past. He's not always been that way. He didn't always want to be there. Right. Mm. But I want you to notice now the power of Jesus Christ. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. man had a problem and he had a past. But he came to Jesus. Yeah. That's Look right. in verse 31. The Bible says in verse 31, And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. Yeah. Verse 32, And there was there a herd of sw many swine feeding on the mountains, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Yeah. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. And when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it into the city, or in the city and in the country. Right. Yeah. And then they went out to see what was done. I probably would have too. Right. Come on. It says, And came to Jesus and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. Yeah. And they were afraid. Yeah. Come on. I want you to notice that in the midst of this man's situation, there came a day in his life that things changed forever. Yeah, yes, yeah. sir. There came a right. day in this man's life when his life changed forever. Right. Come on. And if you read in the text in verse 28, what happened was, is he saw 
Jesus. Yeah. In verse 28 That's says, good. and he saw right. Jesus. That's and that was yeah. the day things changed right. in his Come life. Yeah. And if you read in the book of Mark chapter 5, the Bible says he actually saw Jesus afar off. Hey, yeah. <laughs> you, right. know, you want to know Come a little dog theology what I think happened? I think he was probably on the shore somewhere. Right. And he probably could see out on that lake and he seen the boat in the midst of that storm out there. Right. And the, he saw the boat and it looked like they were going to sink and a man steps out right. and tells the storm to be still. Right. And on. he sees the power of Jesus Christ right. in somebody else's life. Come and yeah. he sees them come to shore and the Bible says when he landed on the shore this man met him. Yeah. In other words he, he saw them right. and he saw them coming that's and he good. met yeah. Jesus at the shore. Yeah, In other words he good. saw somebody right. that could fix him. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> he saw somebody that he thought had enough power to right. fix yeah. his that's life good. and he ran in desperation that's good right and he there. fell down at the feet yeah. of Jesus Christ Amen. and his life changed forever. <laughs> yeah. He met Amen. Jesus. Amen. I want you to notice how this power was demonstrated into his life. Look in verse 31 of this text. The Bible says, And they besought him, and he, com he would not command them to go out into the deep. Now, and, and if you notice, he suffered them. But notice the verse. The Bible says that he would command them. You know what this right. demonstration of God's power was? It was the Word of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. And can I tell you what will change your life is the words of the living God. Yes, right. This Bible is what will change yes, a man or a woman's life. That's the good. power of God will flow into your life yeah. through the words of That's God. Right. That's why we tell you to read your Bible right. every day. That's why you ought to wake up and discipline yourself to have a time set aside right. somewhere yeah. to do a devotional time with God right. and read your Bible and pray. Why? Because this book is powerful yes. and it'll change your life. Yeah. Yes. Just like that old saying is, sin will either keep you from this book or this book will keep you from sin. You believe yeah. that? Amen. 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 The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12, it says, for the word of God is quick and powerful and yeah. sharper than any two-edged mm. sword, piercing even unto the dividing asunder of soul yes. and spirit and yes, of the yeah. joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That's right. Listen, the Word of God will read you come on, <laughs> when you're reading it. Yeah. Come on. It'll read your heart. Right. And it'll convict your heart. It'll stab into your heart. That's right. Mm. It'll That's change good. your life. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God's power was demonstrated through His Word. And I want you to notice not just the demonstration of this power, but I want you to notice the difference this power made. Look in verse 35. Verse 35, it says, Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting mm. at the feet of Jesus, yeah. clothed Amen. and in his right mind. Yeah, and they were afraid. They also, which saw it, told them by what means uh, he that was possessed of the devils were healed. Mm. Now I want you to notice the difference this made in this man's life, if you look in verse 35, the Bible says he was clothed. Right. And he was in his right mind. Yeah. Now listen, I'm not very smart, but I'm not very dumb either. <laughs> if you can be in your right mind, that means you can be in your wrong right. mind. Come in on. other words, there's a right Come mind on. and there's a wrong mind. Right. And a lot Come of on. people are living in the wrong mind. Come on. Uh, yeah. But when they, this man came to Jesus, right. that's good, brother. there was a difference made. That's right. He started Amen. thinking right. Yeah. Amen. yeah he started right. thinking right. Yeah. Listen, right. I've met backslidden Christians away from God and out of church, and their mind was all messed up. Come on. All messed up. Yeah. Thinking all kind of crazy things mm. right. that they knew was not right. Right. They knew was not right. That's right. But when this man came to Jesus and Jesus made things right in his life, he started thinking right. And if you read in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, For if any man be in Christ, mm -hmm. he's yes. a new creature. Hey, right. Old things yeah. are passed away. Behold, all things are mature. Right. Hey, Listen, man. Jesus That's will it. make you a new creature. Yeah. You say, I can't quit my sin. I can't quit drugs. I can't quit drinking. I tried to quit cussing, Brother Philip. <laughs> and the problem is, is you try and quit That's by right. yourself. That's That's right. Right. Preacher, Only man. Jesus can make you a new creature. That's right. You can try and clean the outside up, but you're still just as filthy on the That's inside. right. Amen. And just as a pig goes back to its vomit or a dog goes back to its throw up, listen, right. just as that happens, when your life gets hurting, you're going to run right back to what's on the inside. Come on. Yeah. yeah. That's you right. You have to get Jesus on the inside. Yeah. 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 Amen. That's good. That's Made him good. a new creature. Made him a new creature. Now yeah. listen, notice in the verse, at the end of verse 35, the Bible says he was in his right mind and they were afraid. Mm. They were afraid. Mm. Now listen, yeah. And if you look in verse 36, it says, They also, which saw it, told them by what means they were possessed of the devils and healed. 
These people looking on could not understand what had taken place in this man's life. Right. They could not figure it out, Brother Steve. They saw this man who for years right. has been running around cutting himself. And listen, they've even right. tried to contain him. The Bible says they've even tried to chain him up. Right. And he broke the chains. And can I tell you, right. this world can try and fix a demonic right. problem. Yes. And you can go to right. every AA meeting without right. God in it. Yeah, and on. you can go to everything this world offers yes. to right. fix Come the on. drugs and to yeah. fix things in your life. Right. To fix the right. depression that's in your heart. Come on. But only Jesus can change that's the world. Right. Amen. That's this, right. The world tried to fix this man's problem. Come on. Right. Yeah. And oftentimes the world just tries to bound him to get him out of the way and out of their hair right. so they can yes. go on and do what they want to do. Mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. why they just dope people up these days. Come on. There's issues Amen. going on. Yes, they just sir. give you a Come bunch on. of dope to dope you up, make you numb to the world so you Come ain't on. their problem no more. Right. That's right. Amen. So listen, Pretty stay with me. Bad. These people, Jesus changed their life and they just couldn't understand. And I want to say this. Listen, this world has tried to explain God out of the schools. That's right. This world's tried to explain God out of creation. Yeah. And might I just stop right here and kind of just tell you, if you believe in evolution, Come on. you have more faith than me. That's right. If you can believe that something came from nothing. Right. <laughs> can Come I tell on. you, Stephen Hawkins, the famous atheist, uh, a Christian apologist, was debating him and brought him all the way down to the beginning. And he said, so essentially, you believe that something came from nothing. Come on. And he eventually just said yes. <laughs> right. Right. You have more faith. Right. than me to believe Come something on. came from nothing. Right. You know, it is a scientific impossibility for matter to be created from nothing. That's right. Yeah. Come on. You have more faith than me. That's why the Bible says a fool saith in his heart there is no God. Because yeah. yes. it's yeah. foolish to say that. That's yeah. right. But That's they've true. tried to explain God out of the schools. They've tried to explain God out of creation. <laughs> Yeah. But can I tell you, this world has never been able to explain the change that God makes yeah. in somebody's Come on. life. That's they good. can say things like this. Yeah. Well, he got some religion. <laughs> He's just going through a phase of his life. Brother Come Steve. On now. And I can tell you, when I got saved, and right. God changed my life. I remember people in my life said, ah, he's just going through a phase. It'll wear off one of these days. Come on. Brother, dogs has got religion. Come on, uh, but now. they could not explain why yes, sir. Right. I didn't want to party no more. Right. They couldn't explain why I wanted to try and live right. And Come it's on. not something they can understand. Yeah, right. right. That's good. That's, they that's can't good. explain. These people couldn't explain. They were scared. Matter of fact, the Bible says they were afraid. Yeah. And you know what they didn't fear? Listen, when this world can't explain it, they just run it off. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and you notice that they tried to run Jesus off. Get out yeah. of here. Get out of here. Yeah. You're making That's us right. look back. Hey, we couldn't fix him. Get right. Out of here. Come on. They yeah. try and run it off. Yeah. yeah. That's and good. when God changes your life and you start being a light into those around you's life, right. you don't have to tell them to run off. They'll run off. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> hey, listen. You say, I just can't get away from my old friends. Well, listen, I ain't worried about your old friends. I'm more worried about you. Right. Because Come you on. start living right and talking right and walking with God and Come being on. a light like you should, yeah. they ain't going to want to hang out with you. That's I right. promise. That's right. <laughs> the Bible said, for all that shall live godly in Christ Jesus shall so. suffer persecution. Right. Yeah. If you're living right. godly, this world ain't going to want to do with That's you. That's right. Yes, sir. Amen. Matter of fact, they'll try and run you off. <laughs> yeah. That's right. <laughs> so the difference... There Jesus made in, this, made, or made in this man's life, this world couldn't explain it. Yeah. When I think about men like Billy Sunday, yeah. you hear read stories right. about Billy Sunday, how he was such a bad drunk. And he lost right. everything. And they talk about how, how Billy Sunday got saved. And, right. and if you read history, Billy Sunday got saved. And it wasn't just a phase, Brother Steve. Right. Billy Sunday got saved and his life changed. And he sobered yeah. up. Yeah. And right. God called him to preach. And he became one of the greatest preachers right. this country's ever saw. Come on. Yeah. Think about men like Mel Trotter. You, anybody ever heard of Mel Trotter? Yeah. Hey, Mel Trotter was a drunk, bad drunk. They even say that after one of his daughters died, he sold some of her clothing to get alcohol. He was such a bad drunk. And that if people would have looked on Mel Trotter, Brother Steve, they would have called him the scum of this earth. Right. <laughs> because he was such a bad drunk and he did such horrible things. Right. But if you read history, Jesus, one day Mel Trotter was yeah. homeless. And Jesus, on. Mel Trotter was walking down the street in Chicago and they say he fell upon a mission step somewhere. And he heard the singing of the gospel right. in the building. And, and he walked in and he got saved that yeah. night. And Amen. Jesus Amen. saved him and changed his life. And you know what God did with a man like Mel Trotter? God called him to preach right. and used him to start missions all across the That's country. That's right. Yeah. Amen. God used him and changed his life. That's right. Amen. And if you read in this verse, you know, it says verse 27, he had devils a long time. If I can 
give you from the testimony of this man and from the testimony of uh, Mel Trotter and the testimony of wicked men who've gotten saved and God's used them in a great way, right. that it's never too late Come yeah. On. Yeah. for somebody's life to be changed. Hey, that's right, that's right. It doesn't matter if you've lived for the devil your whole life. Yeah. Listen, Come this on. man had devil a long time. Right. Yeah. And it's yeah. never too late for Jesus to change your life thank and God. change your life. Amen. And that's you better good. thank God for that, by the yeah. way. That's yes, right. sir. Amen. So we see the power of Jesus take place in his life. And we see the demonstration of this power. It made a difference. It changed him. So I want you to notice now, number three, and we're wrapping it up, the proclamation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Look in verse 38. Verse 38. The Bible says, Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him, that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God yeah. hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. Now I want you to notice Jesus shows up and changes this man's life and saves him. Right. And the first thing this man wanted to do, if you look in verse 38, this man wanted to be with Jesus. Right. And listen, it ought not shock you that Come when on. somebody gets saved, they want to be That's with Jesus. Right. Yeah. If yeah. you're saved, you ought to want to be with Jesus. That's right. Come you on. ought to want to be around the things yeah. of Jesus. That's right. I get a little leery when someone gets saved and then they never want to darken the door of Come a church on. house again. Right. Come right. On. If Jesus yeah. saved your soul, you ought to want to be yeah. around right. Jesus. You ought to want yeah. to be That's where good. he's at. That's right. good. And this man wanted to be with Jesus. But notice yeah. in verse 38, Jesus sent him away. Mm -hmm. Verse 38, the Bible says the man saw him, and the Bible says that Jesus sent him away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now listen, why would Jesus send this man away? Mm -hmm. Can I tell you, when you get saved, you, us as Christians, we want to be with Jesus. Come and you know, yeah. we want... Brother Steve, don't it sound good sometimes just to be with the Lord in heaven? Yes, it does. Now, I don't want to go by death. I would rather Him come. I would rather right. Him rapture me out of here. Right. I don't want to die by no means. I still want to serve God and do what I want to do. Right. But I can sit back and imagine sometimes yes, the glory of God right. and what it's going to be on. like yes, being with Jesus. Right. Yes. Yeah. Much better. Much better. And you know, you wonder, why would God leave you down here? Yeah. Come on, old preacher. Mm. Yeah. If He saved us and we could be with Jesus and we're going to be with Jesus for all yeah. eternity, why would God leave you and me Come down on. here? Hey, why did God leave brother. this yes. man? Why did Jesus say to stay here? Yes. Yeah. Come on. Because Jesus had a purpose for him to right. fulfill. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's, That's right. It. Look in the verse. Look in verse 39. The Bible says, Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. That's it. Jesus That's said, it. hey, listen, I've got a purpose for your life. That's right. He said, go to thy own house and show how great things God right. hath done. You want to know why Jesus has left you here? Come on. You want to know why you say things like, why am I, so, why am I living in this Come world on. of suffering? Come Jesus on. left you here that you might tell this world right. what He has done. Come on. He has yeah. not left you here to make a dollar. Though, right. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We can make a dollar. Right. Jesus has left you here Right. To tell this world what he has done. That's right. To that's tell this, listen, the greatest news that's ever hit this world yeah. is still for God so loved the world. That's right. That he gave his only begotten son. Hey. That yeah. if whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. The yeah. greatest news is that Jesus, the Son of God, came down here and right. lived a sinless, perfect life. Right. And crawled up on a cross and hung on the cross right. and died. And the Bible says yeah, He was becoming your sin yeah. and my sin. That's right. And He died in my place. Yes, yeah, sir. And He died right. in your place. Yeah. And that is why He came. And that that's is our right. message. Right. To tell this world that Jesus died for them. That's and right. He was buried Amen. and rose Amen. again. Amen. Amen. That's our message. We're to tell what God has done. Mm -hmm. I want yeah. you to notice Good who is it that Jesus commanded Him to go tell? Mm -hmm. Who is yeah. it? Look in verse 39. Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout what? Throughout the whole city right. how great things Jesus Amen. hath done unto right. thee. Yes, sir. Can I tell you, you ought not talk about Jesus only in the church house. Come on. God right. saved you and put you in this world to talk about Jesus Come around on. the whole yeah. city. Amen. You ought to right. be inviting people to your church right. and telling them there's a Savior that loves them right. and that they can come and hear the gospel of Christ. Right. Your job is not to sit around and do nothing. Your job right. is to spread the gospel That's in right. this whole city 
that God has put you in. Amen. Amen. Yes, yeah. sir. Your right. mission field is right outside them doors. That's Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, and you know, I can't stand it sometimes when the church focuses all around the world. Now, we're big on foreign missions, I believe. Right. <laughs> I believe yeah. in foreign missions. Amen. But they let their town go to hell. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's people in this county that you're supposed to be a witness to. Yeah, that's right. And tell what yeah. Jesus has done. Amen. That's good preaching. He told it to the whole city. And we're about to wrap up. But what did he tell to this whole city? Mm. Yeah. What did he tell? Look in verse 39 again. The Bible says, Return to thine own house and show how great things God hath done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus hath done where? Unto him. Yes, sir. That's <laughs> cool. In other yeah. words, this man went his way and started telling what right. Jesus had done yeah. in his life. Right. His yeah. message was his testimony. Yeah. That's right. And can I tell you the greatest message that you'll ever have right. is the testimony of what Jesus had right. done in your life. Yeah. You know the Apostle Paul, the man who was called to give the gospel to the New Testament church, the revelation right. of the gospel of Christ was given to the Apostle Paul. You want to know the greatest message Paul preached? <laughs> was his testimony. That's right. Amen. And yeah. what the gospel of Christ did in his life. Yes, right. Come and on. Paul, he would tell it to the poor. <laughs> yeah. He would Come tell on. it to the people in the prison. Right. He would tell it to the kings when he got a chance right. to stand before the king. Come on. He told how he was a wicked sinner and right. how he hated Christians and yeah. how he went about to, to kill them and he spoke his word against them to yeah. put them to death. And you That's say, right. I'm such a wicked sinner. Listen, you've never killed God's children. Come on. Yes, yeah. sir. If there was That's anybody right. who was a wicked sinner, it was the apostle. Paul. That's right. That's he right. killed God's church when it was That's just right. a baby. Yeah. yeah. That's why he says things like, I'm the chief of all sinners. Yeah. That's right. I believe he really meant that. That's right. And, and what I'm telling you is, God saved him and changed his life. And his greatest message to this lost world was what the gospel of Jesus Christ did in his heart and life. And it's right. hard to tell somebody about Jesus and what he can do in their life if he's never done it Come on. in your life. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. If Jesus has never saved and changed your life. And did something real in your heart. Yeah. It's hard to go tell somebody else what he can do in there. Come on. Right. Yeah. You ought to go tell people that's right. your testimony. Yeah. And that's how I love how Brother Steve has been having people give their testimonies every yeah. night. Amen. <laughs> you ought to yeah. tell people what Jesus did in your life. That's right. And Sadie, she's about to start coming. But I remember hearing a story about a police officer. <laughs> he, he came up, there was a town drunk. And the town drunk, uh, he used to sell liquor back in those bootlegging days, and he got saved, and he was up on his car, and he was hollering, and the police officer got over there, and he said, son, what, get off that car. And the man said, he said, I'm not drunk. Yeah. He said, I'm saved. Come I'm on. just telling him about what God did for me. And the police officer said, get off of your car, get on mine. If God can save you, he can save anybody. <laughs> and can I tell you, you will be surprised. Right. At the people that only your testimony can reach. Come on. Yes, yeah. sir. There's That's people that only your testimony will be That's able right. to reach. That's right. That's right. That's good. You need to share what God has done in your heart. That's right. And listen, yeah. I think of times of what God has done in my life. <laughs> and listen, yeah. I can remember when I was yeah. young. Listen, I didn't grow up in church. Matter of fact, I grew up in a drug dealer's home. Listen, I grew right. up in a home where God was not mentioned and we right. did not go to church and church was not encouraged. Right. God was not spoken of and Jesus right. was only mentioned when they were cussing. And no. What I'm saying is I grew up away from God right. and knew nothing about God. Right. I remember when I was a teenager, I remember God started getting me in church through families and friends in my life. And just like your testimony, somehow God started putting me in good churches. And, and I remember a time I made a profession when I was 14. Right. I was partying, smoking. Listen, y'all gonna let me come back if I say this? Yeah. I was smoking <laughs> cigarettes, doing drugs, drinking, partying. And listen, I ain't ashamed to say it because I ain't ashamed of what God has done in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what I'm saying is I was a rebellious young person. And listen, I was on a road to be out there in the world with a life that is destroyed. Right. And I was on that road. I was going that direction. And, right. and I remember when I was about 18, 19 years old, I was living with one of my friends. I moved out when I was 15 years old. I was living with one of my friends. We were partying every weekend, doing what we wanted to do. And, uh, and I remember his daddy was, and I'll just go ahead and tell y'all because he ain't here, but he was struggling with drugs. He was on meth. And I remember one day his daddy woke up one morning and told us he was going to church. <laughs> Little did I know yeah. I was in the home of a backslidden Christian. Come on. <laughs> they got saved years ago and fell out of church years ago and I moved in with them and when they were living wild and, and he got up one day and decided to go to church. Come on. And he came home that day and he said, listen, if y'all gonna be living here, y'all gonna start going to church with me. <laughs> so we got up and we were just teenagers partying. I, well, I was actually about to turn 19 and I was like, 
Well, I'm living here. I guess I gotta go to church. <laughs> and if y'all don't hate me too much, I'll let y'all know I had my ears pierced. And I remember they said, "Listen, brother Bobby ain't gonna have that. You better take the things out your ears." And I took them out of my ears, and I remember I put. I started dressing up because uh, they told me to. So I started going to church. Right. I was in church for probably a year. Lost. Told them I was saved. <laughs> I even got baptized. I wasn't even saved. <laughs> like, yeah, I've never been baptized, so they dumped me. <laughs> but you know, for that year, I, I never thought anything about the reality of hell and salvation. And they preached the truth. The Holy Ghost just never dealt with my heart. Yeah. And I remember, uh, I believe it was 2014, uh, June, we were at youth camp. And I remember in 2014, uh, June, we were in youth camp. And I remember they started singing that song. Where they, that's why we sing it at our church like every Sunday. <laughs> they started singing that song, I Know My Name Is There. Yeah, come on. And they'd sing, I Know My Name Is There, I Know My Name Is There. And, and I... God, the Holy Ghost started convicting me with that right. and said, do you know your name is there? Come on. And listen, that was Monday and I, I remember church camp had just started and I, I wanted to get out of that service so bad. Right. <laughs> and I remember getting out of the service and getting back to the night service and guess what? They sang it again. <laughs> and God started dealing with my heart again and I kid you not, they sang that song every single night of the week. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Every single night they sang that song. Amen. And God convicted my heart every night. Yeah. And I remember at the end of that week, I ran and I ran and I ran from the conviction of God. Come on. And I left that church camp lost. And if I would have died, I would have went to hell. Yes, sir. And I remember from Sunday to Wednesday, my life was miserable. Come on. And can I help you with something? If you leave somewhere like this lost, you will leave changed either way. That's You're right. either going to leave saved or the Bible says you'll leave green. Come on. When that rich man came to Jesus and he right. wouldn't be willing to do what Jesus said, the Bible Come says on. he left green. Yeah, right. yeah. And the Holy Ghost of God convicted me from Sunday to Wednesday. And I remember that Wednesday night at church. Listen, I don't pre he could have been preaching on tithe and I have no idea. <laughs> I just remember I was in a conviction the whole service. Right. And I left church that night right. and I was driving my dad's van at the time. My pride, while well, I still was holding on, Right. Still was yeah. I drove home that night and I cried the whole way there in fear that God was going to send me to hell that I had oh. my last chance and I remember when I got home that night I felt as sincere as I can be but Steve, yeah. I fell down and weeping begged God to save my soul Amen. and change my Amen. life yeah. and listen I got up that day and I yeah. knew I was saved Amen. and you want to know why I knew I was saved because when I got up, there was something different. In Come on. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, it went from trying to quit sin as a duty to wanting to quit Come sin on. as a desire. Right. Listen, Come it on. went from doing things in churches because that's what everyone did to wanting right. to do things Come in church. Yes. Yeah. My life was changed. I, it wasn't a drudgery no more to right. live right. Come on. I wanted yeah. to please God. Yeah. That's right. I remember God started convicting me of cussing when nobody was around. <laughs> <laughs> I got saved what it used to be, don't cuss around the preacher, don't cuss around people. But I remember I got saved when it was like by myself. I was like, <laughs> Holy Ghost started convicting my heart yeah. when nobody right. was around. Yes, sir. That's because right. God changed me. Yes, God. And He changed my heart. Amen. And can I tell you something? It, I'm not ashamed to tell my testimony. Come on. Amen. Yeah. And can I tell you, you might have said something like this. Well, I grew up in church. I got saved at a young Come age. Come on. Can I help you with something? Your testimony is greater than mine. Yeah, right. Amen. 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 Come on. If the power of God can keep your life from yeah. a life of sin, That's right. and getting saved at a young age, your Amen. testimony That's is right. greater than mine will God. ever be. Yeah. Listen, if you got saved at a young age and God kept you in church, God kept you pure, God right. kept you right, you ought to rejoice and right. run and shout yes, sir, Thank right. God you never had to taste the corruption of this world. You'll never have to be tempted of things that people who have been in it have been. You'll right. never have to battle those things. Right. Amen. Because God's power kept you yeah. from a young age. You ought to thank God for that. Yeah. Amen. I'd like to ask everybody to stand. I'm going to have Sadie sing, but I'd like to ask Christians. The invitation is going to be about threefold. But I'd like to ask Christians, number one, and I don't know what's in your life. I don't know where you're at in your life. <laughs> But listen, if there's something in your life that is giving place to the devil, I'd like to encourage you tonight Amen. to make sure you do business with God and put that thing down. And God will give you the power. Yeah. Because listen, if you let Satan into your life, he'll take you farther than you ever thought you would go. That's right. And I'd like to ask Christians, if you're saved tonight, I'd like to ask you to pray. Listen, I don't believe in preaching with no, I don't believe in preaching with no action. Listen, you ought to do business with God. 
Right. Every service, you ought to pray even if you feel like it. It's a good time to pray. Right. Yeah. I'd like to ask you tonight to pray to ask God to give you a burden for souls. Amen. To give you a burden for this lost world to be a witness, to be a light, to be a testimony in this community that That's you're right. in. Right. That's good. Amen. And I'd also like to ask you if you're lost to be saved tonight. Come on. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If I could, can I have everyone bow their heads? Mark, it's to see. Yes, sir. Can I have everyone bow their heads and close your eyes before she sings? Matter of fact, can I go ahead and have Christians coming to pray? Can I have some Christians coming and praying for lost souls and praying for God to do something in your life, but also in someone else's life in here tonight? I want every head bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. You might be in here tonight and you say, Preacher, I do not know if I was to die today that heaven would be my home. I do not know that I've ever made things genuinely, authentically right with God in my heart and life. I'm not going to come to you and embarrass you for anything in this world. What I, want to do, what I want to do is pray for you tonight. Nobody's looking around. You say, Preacher, would you please pray for me? I do not know I'm saved. Just stick your hand up. Just stick your hand up. Nobody's looking around. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else? I see that hand. You say, Preacher, please pray for me. I do not know I'm saved. I see that hand. You say, Preacher, please pray for me. I do not know I'm saved. I see that hand. You say, Preacher, please pray for me. I do not know I'm saved. Amen. I'm about to pray. You say, Pray for me. Stick your hand up. I see that hand. Father, I pray tonight. Lord, I pray for those that raised their hands. And Lord, I pray for those that didn't. I pray, dear God, that you would deal with their hearts and give them the boldness and give them the faith to make things right with you tonight. Lord, to get saved tonight. Let this be their day of salvation, Father, where you change their life. We pray in Jesus Christ's name. Every head bowed and every eye still closed. Nobody looking around. If you just raise your hand tonight, nobody's looking. Would you just look up at me? Just make eye contact with me. I see you. I see you. Just look up at me. If I was to tell you tonight that Jesus would take you just the way you are and save you, would you let him? Just nod your head if you would. Y'all are all saying he would. This is what I want you to do. She's going to sing, and I want you to step out of your pew and walk down and let us take a Bible and show you how to be saved. Can I help you with something? Jesus never called anybody that he did not call publicly.